Chapter 42 I didn't have much time to mull over my mistake. We had a steady stream of visitors as the hours passed. Early wishmakers came throughout the day. A little girl who wanted 20 hamsters. The grocer down the street hoping for a summer of sweet peaches. The usual. The local ret reporter returned. She peeked at some of the new wishes hanging from my, bo from my bows and took a photo of the broken eggshells at my, on my trunk. Sandy and Max came to remove the police tape surrounding me. Francesca joined them. Today, she had Lewis and Clark on thin leather leashes. Each cat was wearing an embarrassing, embarrassingly sparkly harness. Francesca discussed the broken eggs with Sandy and Max while Lewis and Clark wove, wove around her legs. I've got a tree cutter coming out later to give me an estimate, Francesca said. So you're definitely cutting it down, Sandy asked, and what I like to think was a disappointed voice. Yep, no question. See that muck, all that water in the yard, Francesca po pointed at the soggy lawn. Plumber told me this dang tree is plugging up some of the, some of the pipes. Least bit of rain and the, yards and the yard turns into a giant mud puddle. Still, people are going to be sorry to see it go, Max said. He reached for Clark's leash and, and tried, it, tried to unwrap Francesca. I know, it's a good old tree, but sentiment doesn't pay the plumber. Sandy grabbed Lewis while Francesca attempted to unknot herself from the leashes. What about the animals and the birds that live in the tree, she asked. Ah, that's where I'm using the old noggin, Francesca said. Every year, the possums and the owls and such vacate the premises on wishing day. Strangest thing. It's like they know what's coming. She, hope, she hopped over the web of leashes. Suppose they don't like being disturbed. In any case, I'm hoping the cutters will come late tomorrow afternoon. Most of the wishing will be done by then. Well, what will you do with all the wishes? Sandy asked. Put them in the trash when no one's looking. That's what I do every year. Whole thing's nonsense anyway. Max and Sandy looked at me sympathetically. I know. I know I don't have a sentimental bone in my body. Francesca paused to address the cats, who were yanking her in opposite directions. If dogs can do this, why is it such a challenge for you two? She turned her attention back to the police. But it's time. More than time. Well, we're going to swing by tomorrow. Keep an eye on things. No lead on, the, no lead on the person who carved that word, but with the eggs and people just generally riled and, riled and then cut down, Sandy shrugged. Couldn't hurt to have us keep an eye on things. Thanks, Francesca said. Not necessary, but I appreciate it. Lewis and Clark caught a glimpse of Bongo and lunged for my trunk. Whew, you crazy felines, Francesca cried, reining them in. They hissed at Bongo. She spread her wings menace, menace, menacingly and let out her most ferocious caw. Lewis and Clark retreated for the safety of Francesca's arms. Once again, she was a tangled knot of leashes and cats. Sandy smiled. Maybe leave the cats home tomorrow, Francesca.